Now, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about why the bridge was built with uh, such a big shelf at the far end, at the Leewood's end. To uh, briefly recap, it shortened the span from what was certainly by far the longest suspension bridge in the world to what was slightly less so the longest suspension bridge in the world. Now, the record holder at the time was Thomas Telford. His Menai Bridge was 580 feet span, and he said 600 feet is the absolute maximum. Uh, his design for the Avon Gorge is, you can see, it's nice and safe um, with a central span of just 400 feet. Uh, Brunel was unperturbed by this. He'd spent several days up at Menai minutely examining Telford's bridge. He was convinced he could clear the Avon Gorge in one go. But everyone was haunted by Telford's cautious remarks. The bridge, the, the gorge width, width is about 900 feet at uh, its narrowest point. Telford recommends no longer than 600 feet, so a compromise is reached, settling on 702 feet as the span. Now, um, access into the vaults was via a two feet wide vertical shaft uh, discovered in 2002. With the discovery, there was a duty of care on the bridge master to check the structural integrity of the vaults. Proper access was needed, so a specialist structural repairs company was hired to make a proper entrance. It was a 10-day job to drill through a six-feet buttress wall. Looking back out from the entrance, you can see the, the, uh, the curvature of uh, the drill uh, very clearly, where, where um, the profile of the drill there. Now, this, this inner wall, bearing in mind um, a six feet wall was never built as a six feet thick wall. They built an outer wall, say two feet, an inner wall, 18 inches, two feet. And then they chuck in the middle, they chuck a load of random old stone with lots of mortar because there's no point having it all nice and finished when no one's going to see it. So the outer wall is uh, the old red, uh, old red, red sandstone. Um, that's beneath St. Mary Redcliffe Church. It's between Clevedon and Portis Head. It's all over the place. We're not sure where it came from, but that's a sort of cosmetic, posh um, uh, presentation of the vault. Inside, it's any old stuff, and it comes from uh, the quarries, which are only a, half a mile, a mile down the gorge, you know, just barged up at high tide. So what we've got here is, uh, there's a natural rock face, and there's a ladder going up to the top of it for engineers to gain access to a further over, um, a sort of more landward um, vault. And what we, what we think is because here, here and here, there are um, big recesses, about a foot square, and they, we think that um, wooden timber, huge joists were put across, and then shuttering was built up, um, and then they carried on building the barrel vault. And um, when it was all dried and they were um, happy that it all sort of um, locked together, they took away all the shuttering. And guess what? They recycled it in Victorian times. They took it with them. They didn't leave any of it there. And we think they took it out of this shaft here. So the last man went, went out of there. And you can see there's the top of the, the rock face. Um, so you see um, there's, there's stalactite formations here. Uh, this is only since 1840. And basically, it's um, calcite in the mortar um, is washed down by rain. And when the drops of water fall down, they, um, they just leave a, a little collar of calcite. Um, and then another one, and then another one. And it goes on and on and on, and you end up with a straw stalactite. They're actually hollow, and they're very delicate, and they grow to a maximum about 15 feet, and then their weight brings them down. They will never meet up with their chums, the stalagmites, on the ground floor. Those are, those are three inches, six, nine inches long. That's all um, funny little things, in growing in little families like that. Um, this photograph is in... In vault five, which is the one that we enter, the main one, 
And it's looking back, this chap is looking back at the, the little route we've come through. That, that's about six or seven feet long, that tunnel. It's only about four or five feet high and very narrow. But this is, this is looking at, you know, from Clifton, as it were. Um, we're in the central one, and you can see that the, the archway that you drive through comes down and directly goes on down. You see, so so what Brunel's done, he's got 4,000 tons up there of stonework, plus about another couple of thousand tons nearly of bridge ironwork and deck, uh, which half, which is the half of it, which is being supported by this tower. So he's got a lot to dissipate, a lot of weight to dissipate down through the vaults into the gorge. And these, this is interesting here, That that's a chamfer there, now, the Clifton Tower has got square corners, but the next time you walk over the bridge, notice that there are chamfer corners on the leeward side. And that's because he's tucked in the, the corners to make a smaller footprint of this tower, which then brings the weight in onto this, uh, more onto the um, shaded area, which is stone, solid stone, rather than the voids. So, uh, and we didn't know, it was only with the discovery of the vaults that we realized then why it had chamfers on that side. And here we, here we are in vault five. Um, you can see um, lots of stalactites, lots of stalactites. Um, it, I've been in there quite a few times and I was saying that, oh, it's 18 feet wide, it's 36 feet high and it's 55 feet long. And then I suddenly realized that's actually one, two, three. So it's the Temple of Solomon. It's, <laughs> it's the Holy Trinity. There's all sorts of things you can think about with, with that kind of uh, um, uh, proportions. When we're in there, I sometimes say to everyone, let's be quiet and we can listen. You can hear a car go across and all you hear is boom. That's all you hear. And uh, yeah, there, there's, um, there's the stalactites. I've taken several groups in um, of Subterranea Britannica and they say that the, the um, formations, the stalactites are fantastic. They've never seen anything like it. And they, they, they said to me that it would be because where they normally go, bats get in and stuff. And so uh, things get broken because a bird can break these off if a bird gets in. But there's, there's been no, it was totally sealed until 2002. So uh, there's been nothing in there and there's nothing in there now. And so we're very lucky to have such um, strong formation. Um, we did have a Halloween show, which was pretty, it was great, it was pretty scary, but the problem is, if you just look at those black chairs, our maximum audience is um, 12. Um, we've had um, a Greek drama perform there, again, only 12 people, so we're keen to have um, some kind of events and performances and so on, but it's, it's very difficult because of the, the restrictions on it. Um, when we can resume tours in there, who knows? There will, there will have to be no restrictions on social distant, distancing of any kind in order for it to even think about doing it. But I can't wait to get back in there. And um, uh, there's, it's much better seeing it, um, in the, it you know, in reality rather than on a Zoom meeting. So I hope I meet you in there in the future sometime. That's it from me. Thanks.